the University of Nigeria and Soka, Nigeria's premier university, in their 2012 endowment lecture, chose its excellency, Owele Anayo Ruchazukorocha, OON, as a guest lecturer. The creme de la creme of the university community were all on hand to listen to Owele Ruchazukorocha, whose leadership of Imo State had within a very short space of time made undeniable impacts in the lives of the masses. There certainly couldn't have been a better choice of a lecturer to dissect the Nigeria's developmental dilemma than His Excellency Owele Rochazu Korocha, the governor of Imo State. Can we look at Nigeria, extra Nigeria, from beginning to the end? And can we look at the leadership question? So do not expect from me a written text because I'm not used to a prepared text. It was Bob Marley and the Wellers, and for those of you who love music, I love Bob Marley for his philosoph philosophical songs. When he said, For how long shall they kill our prophets while we sit aside and look? The question today is, For how long will ignorance destroy our nation while we sit aside and look? Someone said to me that Nigeria is 52 years old, and I said, No, Nigeria is not 52 years old. Nigeria is 98 years old. I'm talking about amalgamation. The fact that we had our independence in 1960 does not make us a 50, 52 years old country. We've existed before the advent of our independence. So when we look at Nigeria, we shouldn't be looking at Nigeria from the point of view of 52 years. We should be looking at Nigeria as a country in 2014 will be 100 years old. The question before us then, and I'm going to take a very practical approach. I don't want to sound like a lecturer before the professors begin to mark my thesis. <laughs> so let me take the humble approach of being practical with you. But my joy today is that to God be the glory, professors are seated and Rochas is a lecturer. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, on the most serious note, the issue before us is too serious to follow the convention that only people who are qualified to speak must speak in affairs that concerns our nation. And I've decided to be talking about leadership so our people can understand truly the problem of Nigeria is a problem of leadership. But I'm not going to talk about security issues, I'm sure. And please accept my condolences on behalf of the National University Commission for the recent shooting in Mobi, where somebody who have graduated in a crime of shooting, what we hear happens in America. But let me also address that before I go into my lecture. That do not be bothered with the insecurity we face in our country. I think this is uh, just happening at the time it has to happen. And if you notice, there's, uh, this is a global issue now. In um, Mali, it's coup d'etat. In Syria, it's near civil war. In America, it's psycho killing. Somebody goes to a cinema hall and shoot people. In the north, it's Boko Haram. In the south, it's kidnapping. So it's not a global issue, and I am I, the only way I can describe it is to go back to my God and ask questions. What is happening at this time? So this insecurity is not particular with Nigeria, and recently we're experiencing the kind of flood that we have ever experienced in a century. So for those of you who are Christians, this is the time to put your knees on the floor. So I'm not going to discuss the issue of security in the course of this lecture. Because often than not, people have attributed non-development to insecurity, and I disagree. The question today before us is, is Nigeria a poor nation? Is Nigeria a third nation? And are we cost? The answer is no. I disagree with anyone. Nigeria is not a third nation. Nigeria is not a cost nation. 
and that Nigeria is not a poor nation. If we are cursed, then it will. How would God have given us the sweet crude, the arable land, the human resources and material resources? Two the most you mention. So we're not poor. What is poor in Nigeria is the management of the resources of Nigeria. Any day you see this university not doing well, hold the vice chancellor responsible. Because there's nothing wrong with the head of state, but there's something wrong with the state of the head. <laughs> so there could be something wrong with the state of the head of a department, of an institution, or a site, or a country, or a nation, or local government, or a state. But before I do this, let me go back to the topic. Nigeria at 52, the leadership question. Let me start by defining the word leadership. I do know that Leadership has been defined by different scholars and different people at different times. But let me take two definitions and then the third one that makes sense to me. One is the one by Peter Drucklin said that uh, leadership is, a, is anyone that commands followership. In other words, once you have followers, you are a leader. Maxwell in his own definition said, listen, period. Leadership simply means influence, nothing more, nothing less. But there's one definition that I've taken to my heart that is so, so, so sweet and so beautiful. It's the one by uh, Miles Monroe. When he defines, he said, leadership is the capacity to influence, to inspire, to motivate, if you like, to direct people to work towards a common cause. Without the use of the instrument of manipulation. For me, that tends to capture the whole essence of leadership. And I give you this instance. One million lions led by a sheep. And one million sheep led by a lion. These are two different people in a battle. The one million sheep led by a lion has the capacity to defeat the one million lion led by a sheep. Because the one million sheep led by a lion, the lion who is a leader has the capacity to turn the rest of the sheep into lions. And the one million sheep lions led by a sheep. The sheep has the capacity to turn the entire lions into sheep. So be careful when you are choosing a leader, even in a classroom, even as a dean of studies. What makes the difference is leadership. Therefore, leaders, and the Bible said, let me refer to the Bible, I, like, I love the word of God. He said, it is for God to conceal a thing and for the kings to discover or un un uncover it. So what is the problem is that when God has given us human resources and material resources, there's something he left in between, management. And it's the ability to coordinate the human resources and material resources that brings about productivity. So nations that have properly managed their human and material resources are called developed nations. And nations that have not properly managed theirs are called the third world country. I hate to talk about this topic leadership because sometimes I might sound too Please bear with me if I sound too, too bad. But I think the truth must be told. So leadership is everything. I disagree with anyone who tells me that Nigeria is, uh, is suffering. Nigeria has no money. Nigeria is poor. And what makes it even worse is that when you ask most people, they say, they say listen, the problem of Nigeria is illiteracy. It's not. They say that the problem of Nigeria is there's no electricity. It is not. They say that the problem of Nigeria is roads. It is not. 
this is what is called the symptoms of the disease and not the disease itself. It is like somebody who is suffering from diabetes. If you have medical doctors here, they will understand what I'm talking about. And your diabetes has gotten to the situation where it has affected the island of the longer hands. And you begin to have swollen food and sores on your foot. And you go to the doctor to give you a bandage to tie the wound. That bandage can never heal for as long as you have, you have not addressed the disease. The disease in our society is leadership. And until this is done, we cannot make any headway. People often say to me that Nigeria is poor. And I just came back from a lecture where I addressed the uh, uh, congressional black cacos. And it was a very interesting one. And I sat down there, I had Americans telling me about the failure in my land. And I was troubled in my spirit. I felt pain. I felt, I felt bad. And I rose to speak to them. Of course, it was a different story when I, I presented them. I said, listen to me, we're not poor. What you see in Africa and Nigeria is what is called an apparent poverty which does not reflect any practical realities. <laughs> it is like a child in a, in a, in a fast-moving train or in a, a little boy in a fast-moving car. When we're kids, when the car is moving in a bus, we see the trees all moving around. Not knowing that we're the people moving, the tree does not move. <laughs> it's like in my elementary geography, they say sun rises from the east and sets in the west. It's not true. The sun does not rise. The sun does not set. It is we that rise and set in the course of rotation and revolution of the earth. <laughs> So it is important that we must understand this as a nation. Now let me tell you the problem of Nigeria in ABC form. The problem of Nigeria is that Nigeria does not even understand this problem. <laughs> so I said to Americans, listen to me. My problem is not that I'm not blessed. More blessed than anyone else in the world. My problem is that I'm the source without the resources. The problem of Africa, the problem of Nigeria is that we are the source without the resources. And the source without the resources means anytime I want to eat chocolate or my son wants to eat a chocolate, I have cocoa right there in Imo State. But I have to wait patiently for my cocoa to travel 10,000 kilometers away only to be fixed by somebody else somewhere 10,000 kilometers and send them back to me in small wraps at a more expensive price. That is my problem. Imo State is a state sitting on a gas. 90% of Imo State is gas. Yet, I don't have electricity. That is my problem. So for me, to put on any power or light, I have to wait for somebody somewhere in Europe to manufacture a gen set for me and manufacture my diesel and send back to me before I can have light. So we're not a poor nation. Rather, what I'm seeing is that a reversal theory of power where the tenant has become a landlord and landlord become tenants <laughs> we ought to be the landlord and not tenants Nigeria ought to be landlord and not tenants he in, 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 in law will say keep to plant it or solo solo sedate whatever is found in the land belongs to the land but in Nigeria it doesn't belong to the land it belongs to foreigners so th that doctrine in law is, is a failure in, in Nigeria Kill, kill, planted or solo, solo, say it. Whatever is found in the land <laughs> belongs to the land. But whatever is found in Nigerian land belongs to the Westerners. We can't even say how much of petroleum we produce. That's our problem. So let me keep that. I, I want you to follow me in this class so you can understand Nigeria better at 52. <laughs> <laughs>